This is Chelsea Schaefer, and this is season four of The Score. You all have listened to this podcast three quarters of a million times, and we are here in season four to bring you even more of what you love. Hey, The Score fans and possibly, hopefully, Roping.com fans. It's Caitlin Gusov with another bonus episode of The Score on the weekend brought to you by Roping.com. You guys, for the month of August, we are so excited because we're going to be sharing audio with women of Roping.com. For the month of August, it's all women all the time because there are a few, more than a few, handy women out there in the roping industry. On today's episode, we have a special segment with Trevor Brazil and Larry D together. Those guys talk about how to make their horse business work. They have been longtime friends and business partners for so long. They've built thriving they've built a thriving horse business based on great horsemanship, honesty, and hard work. Here are the fundamental components to their operation. Larry D. Guy is an eight-time WPRA world champion who has led the charge for women's roping in the last three decades. Guy, 50, of Abilene, Texas, is also a longtime business partner of Trevor Brazil, responsible for making some of the best horses the King of the Cowboys has ever swung a leg over. In their series on roping.com, Guy and Brazil illuminate what makes their partnership sing. Use code LARRYD15 for 15% off your all-access membership on roping.com today. That's LARRYD15, L-A-R-I-D-E-E-1-5 for 15% off. Some of them have went better than others, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you ride a horse right long enough, they make. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't get paid for the hours that you put in them, but they still make good horses. I think the ones that scare me now are the ones that have been done wrong too long because of the time it takes. You have to invest in retraining. I would rather start from scratch than fix other people's problems. That's why he and Miles have a really good deal going now because Miles, you know, can get them going as young and two-year-olds and three-year-olds and then, you know, he can he can start them on cattle and then let Trevor, you know, do the fine-tuning and stuff and and they're all going to be good like that. I mean, we worked hard at what we had because we we would go and buy them and, and a lot of them we would buy with problems and I would take them home and work on them and get them to you know, a certain place, and when I thought they were ready for him to take out there, then he'd take them, and some he could keep out there, and some he had to send home, and we work on. And like he said, there were so many hours, and some we sold for a lot of money, and the hours, it wasn't, it wasn't really that much. No, but I mean, <clears throat> it's not always like what you, we may not have made money on some of them, but I mean, I, you learn from all of them, yeah. you know. That's, that's what it's about. You can't be a great horseman or horsewoman without having a lot of different horses under you and because you learn something from all of them. The best horse that you know, I've ever had the opportunity to make with them was Texaco by far. I mean, he was unbelievable. He's kind of what put our game out there, really. He was hard to make for both of us, but he was the best. Yeah, he was a little turd, but you know, I would be on the fence about competing on him and she would take him somewhere. She would compete on him in the breakaway somewhere and he's like she's like it's not any different away from home than it is at home and the feel he, she, you know, the feel in the box. She's like if you'll just trust him, do this or this and I could that's the kind of little things that I couldn't articulate with people or they couldn't articulate to me is that feel and if I had executed what she was telling me it was exactly like she said but that was that was a little horse that tested both of us but it was he was awesome some of the stuff he could do was why we spent the time that we did on him he was just um, he was a tough little horse and he 
he had never really been treated like a horse and Trevor sent him to the ranch. And I said, do you want me to ride him like a ranch horse? And he, yeah. And so Texaco become a ranch horse for a while and he um, split reins and saddled and not saddled. I mean, he'd get saddled in the mornings and unsaddled in the evenings and I'd have to pick cactus out of his legs and I mean, no boots and stuff like that. And I mean, he went, you know, through the cactus and rocks and he just had to become a horse for a little while. And he kind of had to trust you. He was one that was, he, he was funny. I mean, if he didn't like you and didn't trust you, he wasn't gonna work. And he um, just kind of become a ranch horse for a while, while and I camped on him and rode him. And then I'd rope on him in the evenings and wash him off, put him up. And, and that's, that's really what my part in it was, was just getting him where, you know, you could tr he, he would trust you and you could get him where you could do stuff on him, just like where he could become a horse. I think the part that everybody rem remembers about Texaco is the bridleless run at the horse show at Fort Worth, but. He called me, he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride him without a bridle, and I'm like, do it. Brandy Brock did it when he was four at that roping school in the breakaway we were making we were just playing, and she was riding him around with it. And he said, and Trevor called. He was actually either headed down the alley or in the arena. I was and said, down in that warm up arena behind. Yeah, I think. and said, I'm going to do it. I said, He's going to work. Do it. He's going to work. And he did. He was the best horse there. They just didn't, they had to disqualify him because he didn't have a bin on, right? Yeah, from the show part. But I mean, I, I tied a calf in seven something and won the was the fastest time. I got to come back and compete that night because it was on time, but yeah, they disqualified me from the, the show. show part because you have to show in a bridle or some sort of bridle. It was worth it just just to to brag on that little horse because he was cool. He deserved he deserved attention like that. Well, we don't ever fight. Like we don't ever argue. We don't ever we don't ever fight. And he I mean, I'm a girl, and so there's times that, you know, like a little emotion gets in it, and I get a little whatever, and he just talks it down and, you know, always levels it out. But, I mean, he knows that I'm always going to think about it and get reasonable, you know, about things. But we, I don't, I mean, we don't ever argue or ever fight. We've never, what is it, we never disagree. I mean, we if we have a disagreement, we just, we're okay with it. Like, he's got his opinion, I got mine, and we're... We're fine with it, but we don't ever, we don't ever fight. I mean, I can say when you have, you know, been friends this long, the the horse part is so minuscule in the scheme of things that it's a horse, any kind of a horse disagreement is not gonna, not gonna affect us because I know that I'm gonna be fair with her, she's gonna be fair with me, and she's got my best interest in in mind and so I don't really worry about it. Thank you guys for listening. Trevor, Larry D, thank you guys for your guys' long time business and friendship. And you guys, if you're liking this stuff, don't forget, for this episode, use promo code LarryD15 for an all access membership to roping.com. And don't forget, if you're liking these bonus episodes on the score, leave us a rating and review. Let us know. Let us know kind of which tips you want to hear because we have so much. And if you don't hear a certain tip you're wanting to hear on the score, don't forget, sign up for roping.com because there are so many videos with so many coaches.